I got a lot of moments with Big. Big is different because I was with Big from the beginning. I mean, man, where can I start with Big, man? Big was a jokester. Another one where he remind me, him and L reminds me so much of each other because they brought the spirit and the atmosphere to the studio. So, you know, you there to work, but Big going to crack those jokes. He's going to gamble. He got me, he got me out a couple of dollars in one session, you know, and then he's going to go and jump in the booth like he ain't do all the jokes in the, like it just totally transform and just knock the song out. You know, I remember doing a session with him and Sadat X and they was going back and forth on Come On. And and that was just fun, man. Like, because Sadat is his own character. Them two together, smoking, drinking. Nah, I don't, I don't think it, it gets... No, nah, I mean, I could tell you... I mean, if hip-hop was the end of the mall, man, I, I have so many incredible memories with, with Big, man. Big was just, uh, I can't even explain it, like charismatic, like that dude was, he was he was somebody else, you know? Flo, it's the first time I, you know, I'm a lyricist, so, you know, they got me working with him, and it's like the first time I'm hearing somebody flow, and he's going all over the place. He's taking you around the world, but the flow, it, it was just like nothing else I've ever experienced with any artist I work with. During um the Party and Bullshit remix, I think Big came in like when I was almost done with the remix, sitting there nodding his head. I remember Mary coming in, you know, I remember Mary coming in and checking out the remix while I was working on it. I was remember walking in Mary's session when they was doing uh You Don't Have to Worry remix. And if anybody could check uh What's next on the menu? The P Rock CL Smooth record that was done in the same studio. And if you listen to an ad lib on it, I did an ad lib on that record. So yeah, doing that Who's the Man time was something special. With the Super Cat remix, I mean that was Jesse West that did that, and Jesse West was the dude that introduced me to Puff. You know, Jess was like, man, you you nice with the beat show. You need to go see Puff. And I'm like, what Puff doing? You know, nah, you know, he's starting this thing, this bad boy thing. And I remember going in the office to see Puff and he's sitting at sitting at the desk. And the bad boy logo was just behind him. It wasn't even a label, but he had bad boy behind him, the kid, the, the logo, everything. And I remember that was like his thing. And then he just transition to Arista so to be there from that like Puff was another mastermind you know as far as marketing you know with with Craig and Big once again Puff Puff is like a, a genius marketing person when he wants to focus on artists because I think once he became an artist I think it it wasn't the same no more when I learned about Puff, man, he, he passionate, passionate about the music, you know, passionate, always. He foreseed other things, you know, when he told Big, you want to be the underground rapper or you want to be the rapper that's going to get paid, you know, that's what helped Biggie transform, transition. He let Big do Ready to Die, do all the hard, let him get out all that hard street. And then he came with... Uh, you know, Juicy Fruit by M. Tume. And he came with the, the soft records. Like, I let you do your records, now do my records. Came with the Isley Brothers. And therefore, but to see Big transform from the hard and then jump on the commercial, that was big. I mean, I give Puff credit for for giving him those, those choices, but... That was his 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 artistry that made that. Where would Big be today? Man, still tops. Cause Big was he wasn't scared to gamble on anything. And his transition on whatever he wanted to do was always it always felt right. I wasn't into none of that commercial shit, but he made it feel right. 
you know, even when he did the record with Bone Thugs, he made it feel right. It ain't feel like he was reaching or he was stretching. He fell right in pocket. And I, you don't see many artists. You see people that look, okay, they doing something like that. I need something like that. Big would take his own records and transform them into what he wanted. He ain't really worry about what other people was doing. It's just that when I get that loop, yo, man, this is what I want to do. I seen him do it with, um, with Get Money. You know, good friend of mine, L Easy LP, that ran with me and Buck and OG and all of us was a producer that ran with us. So Easy LP came in there with the Sylvia Stripling and it had all these noises and horns. And I just remember Big saying, yo, take all that shit off the top of it. I just want the loop and just straight rhymed off the loop like Big didn't need nothing extra. He'll just tell you, I just need the loop. Fuck all that extra shit. Give me the loop. And that's what they did. And that's how you got to get money, you know? 